All righty, we had the Raw show here. I got to shut the chat off. Now now, now we're going back to best. find out when Natty had the, the most recent win that wasn't on main event. <laughs> Despite multiple appearances and going 50-50 with the champ like a month uh, ago. Wasn't she on Total Divas? That means something. I mean, for crying out loud, we're really comparing Natty to J.D. Drake, who's had two <laughs> appearances on Dynamite in his entire career. And one of them was a loss. Uh, and the other didn't even mashup? wrestle. God help me. <laughs> what are we doing here? So Cody comes out for a promo. And uh, he wants to talk about Jey Uso, but he gets interrupted by Dom. And Dom explains that Mommy was injured last week by Nia Jax. And apparently she's fine. She went to uh, Australia with uh, Buddy for like a game or something. Could be back tonight for all I know. But uh, this leads to the Judgment Day coming out, and we have Cody versus Dom. And uh, Cody beats this guy in three minutes and uh, hits him with the Cody Cutter in the crossroads, gets the pin. And so the heels start going after Cody. Sammy and Kevin run down to make the save. And uh, the heels bail. Baby faces kind of, you know, acknowledge each other. Cody starts to leave. Kevin says, oh, hold on a second. We got to have a chat here. So he calls... Cody back into the ring, and he says, let me get this straight. You are responsible for Jey Uso being here. Cody says, yep. Kevin says, I don't think I need to explain all of the issues that this guy has caused, and I just want you to tell me why you thought it was a good idea to bring Jey Uso into the locker room here on Raw. And Cody says, well, a lot of, don't, a lot of people don't want to hear it, but my job is to make these people happy. And if I ask these people... They're going to tell me they want Jey Uso here. And he asked the people, they all cheer, they like Jey Uso. So he says, I've received second chances. Jey's one of the best wrestlers in the world. He deserves another chance. And uh, Sammy says, you know, Kevin, I don't want to pile on here, but I've known you since day one. You've always been like this. Maybe I trust people too quick, but I know Jey. Been through a lot with him. He had to dig himself out of some issues. And you should, uh, you know, I don't. you don't need to give him a second chance, but you should. I've given you second chances. You've given me second chances. That's why we were the tag team champions at Mania, main eventing. And Kevin says, listen, I know where this is going. You want me to pretend he's not a big part of why you didn't beat Roman at Mania? One of the big reasons you didn't beat Roman in Montreal? Fine. I'll pretend that I didn't lose five title matches against Roman Reigns because of Jey Uso. I'll even pretend that he's not about to join the Judgment Day. But you want me to trust him? Not going to do it. But I trust both of you, so... I hope you're right. And he storms off, and Sammy's like, God, this hothead. Every time. Then we had a great match. Kofi Kingston and Ivar. I loved this match. It was giant Ivar against small Kofi. And the setup here was it was supposed to be Viking Raiders versus the New Day, but Eric was sick, and so they had to change the match. And so uh, Ivar... I guess decided, man, I got a singles match on Raw and we get time. Because it's supposed to be a two out of three falls. So, like, they had time. And so, man, this was the best Ibar you ever seen. He's in there playing Vader. He's just running this dude over. And finally, he knocks this guy down. He kills him with a lariat. And he starts climbing up to the middle rope like he's going to do that Vader bomb. And Valhalla says, no! Tells him to do a flip. And the crowd's like, this guy ain't gonna do a flip. And Ivar, he puts his first foot on the top rope, and he starts getting his second foot up. I'm like, oh my god, this guy's gonna do a moonsault. And so I'm fully expecting Cody to like get the hell out of the way, brother. But he doesn't. And Ivar does his giant freaking moonsault and he squishes Kofi after death. And I thought, that's it, man, it's over. And Kofi kicks out. And so they keep fighting, the place is going nuts. And they go up top again. This time, Kofi hits the sunset flip power bomb. Ivar stumbles up. Kofi hits the trouble in paradise. Gets the pin. This was the best match on the show. And uh, man, this Ivar, he was awesome in this match. This was a great little match here. Then we had Shinsuke Nakamura. He's supposed to face Ricochet. And uh, and out comes my favorite character in all of wrestling. Here comes Seth. You know, when I was in uh, 
junior high, middle school, as you guys call it nowadays. Mm-hmm. Matriculate. We had some dance or whatever. Uh, and so I had to, you know, wear something nice, which mm-hmm. sucks. Some hammer pants. And I remember I went to uh, to some store to get a suit. And, uh, man, I got this suit with these big old shoulder pads. Brooks Brothers. And uh, and it was like, I look like an idiot. But, you know, it was, you know, 1990. So it was all right. But it's now 2023. And Seth Rollins came down to the ring for this fight. He's going to fight Shinsuke Nakamura. And he comes down wearing what can only be described as female business attire. That's what it was. Some black suit jacket with shoulder pads, but it wasn't like a men's suit jacket. It was for sure a women's suit jacket. And these, these like, it wasn't parachute pants, but they were like, you know. Hammer pants or something. No, nah, they they were like uh, uh, bell bottoms. Bell bottoms. Bell yeah. bottom suit. I'm, I'm like... Did your luggage get lost and you're wearing Becky's outfit? Like, what's happening here? And I'm just watching him in this outfit, and it's like... He took one piece from just, you know, seven different people in the locker room. And listen, I don't mind wearing women's clothing. Like, we've all done it. But, like, you don't wear it to a fight. I'm watching him attack this guy in this outfit, and I'm like, what were you thinking, dude? What were you thinking? So, this is a ridiculous fight. And the people are pulling him apart, and I can't take any of it seriously, okay? And so uh, and so finally, he gets taken to the back. I, I presume to change, but it got worse. So then Nakamura faces Ricochet, and it's a boring match. Nakamura ends up uh, outside. He gets a chair, and Ricochet confiscates it, hits him with the, gets DQ'd. And then, like, Ricochet complains. Like, well, he had the chair, so I had to hit him with it. Why are you DQing me? It's like, how long have you been here, brother? You don't know the rules? This was stupid. So then Nakamura's beating him up, and uh, and Seth runs back down, still in this outfit. And uh, and even though Nakamura has just had a long, grueling match, and Seth is fresh as a daisy, Seth gets in there, and Nakamura beats his ass and drops him back first over the announce table, and he just leaves him for dead, paralyzed. He has to be helped to the back. He can't even walk. He collapses. I'm like, remember when like Seth was was like super over as a babyface before he ran into the fiend, mm-hmm. and then like the, you know he went heel, and then you know it wasn't like he turned babyface. It was like he had this song, and then you know people I think started singing it in a mocking way, but then it like became something, and all of a sudden he was a babyface. And now this is like the the uh, every week, dude. Well, no, every Brian, week. This is the real Seth. It's not though. This is absolutely not Colby Lopez. That's a lie. Okay, but there's more later. So then Chelsea and Piper do a promo, and uh, and this absolutely sucks. Prelim comedy. They're the champs. Chelsea and Piper versus Zoe and Shayna. We have our second straight DQ. Nia shows up, attacks Piper, and she destroys all the women, and leaves them for dead. Do I need to say it? Say it. Then Adam Pierce with Chad Gable. I, I would have. Chad wants another shot at, uh, at Gunther, but Pierce is like, dude, you you lost. I, I can't just give you another title shot. You know, this ain't AEW. Unless like, you're Natalia. You're going to have to work your way up here. You may have to beat the workhorseman to get this, this championship <laughs> match. So then Bronson shows up, and he says, yeah, get to, be- get to the back of the line, brother. And, and then Chad says... Oh, yeah? Yeah, why don't we fight? And and Bronson goes, I'm too big for you. And Chad goes, I've suplexed guys way bigger than you. And he goes, oh, you can't get your arms around. I can get my... Was, I was dying at this argument. And so finally Pierce is like, guys, just go out there and wrestle. Jiminy Christmas. So uh, we have a Jey Uso promo where Damian Priest walks up, tells him to make a, a decision by the end of the night. And then it's Chad versus Bronson Reed. And the story is, can Chad suplex this man? And he tries once. Bronson Reed. And he tries twice. And Bronson says, I'm just too big. And he tries a third time and fails. And then gets squashed with a big splash and pinned. Now, I know this has become like a big thing, okay? But I believe believe what's happening here is that Chad is going to win the title from Gunther. I still believe this is going to happen. But I think it's going to be at like Survivor Series, like a big pay-per-view. And so I think in the meantime, what's happening is he has to run into the bump in the road. 
He's got to face Bronson a second time where he actually hits the big suplex and pins the guy. And in the meantime, as a stopgap, Ciampa is going to run through Imperium, and then he is going to lose at Fastlane to Gunther. So I think that's what's happening here, but... Hey, you know, I've been wrong before. Not a three-way dance where Gunther ends up losing the IC No, title. I think that's a horrible idea. Uh, well. Then we have Kevin and Sammy. If you don't Sammy. want to beat him, you could do that. Kevin and Sammy arguing, but I, I do want to beat him. Like, this is wrestling. He I needs know, to, He you needs should. to be pinned to lose his title. Look, I'm not running that company. You know they think sometimes. We had the Becky Open Challenge. Big Bronson Reed, Becky and Natty. Get I believe this right. was... Uh, I, I got like two minutes here, bro. So they had uh, they had a good match. Felt rushed. But it was good oh, yeah. while it lasted, and uh, Natty escaped. They traded cradles and Becky Pinder, but that was a good match. And I have to get to the set thing before I run out of time. <laughs> Pierce signs this inexplicable Dom Dragon Lee title match, NXT title match on Raw next week. That was weird. Ciampa beats Giovanni Vinci with a Sicilian stretch. Vinci's oh. still a loser. He's about to get booted from this group, Terrible. and it looks like Ludwig is next. And then, here we go. Seth has gotten his ass kicked twice. He's gotten beaten up. He can barely walk. We cut backstage, and Seth is wandering around backstage. He's taken off his his women's uh, business attire top, and he's tied it around his waist. (laughs) And then he's put on a giant pair of lightning bolt sunglasses, (laughs) and he's wandering around in this outfit, and like, I'm supposed to take this seriously. I can't. I'm watching this guy going, you're so mad, you're so hurt, that you tied this thing around your waist and you put these idiot sunglasses on. He dressed up like... And he starts getting all mad with his giant sunglasses on. I'm so mad at this guy. I can't believe he beat me up in a fair fight. I'm so mad. You choose the time and the place and the stip. Oh, my God. I just can't do it. And then uh, Jey Uso faced Drew McIntyre. And uh, good match. Drew ends up, uh, they're in the corner, and uh, all of Judgment Day comes out, and Jay's in the corner, and Judgment Day starts giving him advice. And so he goes to fist bump Priest, and everyone thinks he's turned, but instead he super kicks all of the Judgment Day. And the place, oh man, he's not going to join the Judgment Day! He turns around, and Drew flies in. You got to see this Claymore. They need to steal one more piece of business from the Saturday Night Main event, if you will. And that's the green screen for those opening promos. Put something behind them, like, you know, we're FTR, you know, have no fits or whatever behind the, just something. Like what you got behind you right now. He's in an empty room. Ready? Boom! Huh? Hey, look at that. Now Lance is a star. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.